This is a review of a Bluetooth speaker all the way from France by a company called Cabas. The speaker itself is called the Swell. Priced at £229, the Swell arrives with either black and silver or white and gold finish. And this arrives in a box like this, or very nice, or rather low key, or rather luxurious in its effect. And once you take off the sleeve, and then you open the box, so the speaker is inside. Let me take it out and show you in a bit more detail. The speaker itself is comparatively light at 750 grams. And as you can see, it looks a bit like a sports flask or a small sort of coffee flask or something of that nature. It is fairly compact-ish for a Bluetooth speaker. Definitely one to put in a medium sized bag, I would say. The look of the speaker is rather low key and rather stylish. We have the Cabas brand in the center here with the chrome look finishes. The chrome bit itself, well, they're a little bit disappointing when you look up close because they look a little bit plasticky. Let me bring this to camera and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So around here, for example, where you can see this chrome, it is movable in a plasticky finish. If you can see me doing that, it sort of ruins the effect a little bit. But if you're not in the habit of tweaking plastic bits on the end of Bluetooth speakers and you just leave that as is and you look at it, it looks rather nice. Now on the top of the swell, are a row of rectangular buttons, as you can see here. And going from right to left, you can see the power button, an auxiliary source button, Bluetooth, a mute button, and two volume buttons. That's it in terms of the interface. You'll find three sockets on the rear. There's a service mini USB socket, a power socket, and an auxiliary input for another source, such as a digital music player. When you turn on this swell, there will be a number of vocal responses telling you the current state of the speaker. So, for example, when I turn on the speaker, which I'll do in a second, it will tell you if it's connected to Bluetooth or not. It'll also tell you if the battery is low. And I haven't charged this particular speaker for a little while and the battery is low. But I thought I'd let you hear that status message as well. So when I turn on the speaker, you should hear the status of Bluetooth but also the battery. Here we go. Any second now, folks. Battery low. There's the battery. Connected. And that's the Bluetooth. Connected. Just in case you didn't hear it the first time, eh? Now there's a lithium battery inside here. Bluetooth has a 10 meter range and Bluetooth itself also supports aptX, aptX. Now ambitious users may want to buy two swells because if you do buy two, you can set them up to play in stereo mode. You can buy more than two. You can buy three, four or more, and you can place them in different rooms and you can have a sort of multi-room Bluetooth speaker set up. But I decided just to review the one speaker for now. Now the speaker itself has a 90 decibel sensitivity and it'll run for around 10 hours or so on a typical charge with typical use. Pairing for Bluetooth is pretty simple. You just press the Bluetooth button on the top here. It'll flash blue. And once you've set up the Bluetooth, which is pretty quick and painless on a phone or a tablet or whatever, the blue light will stop flashing and just beam at you in a blue fashion, as you can see here. Although on camera, that probably looks more white than blue. But believe me, in real life, it's quite a nice darkish blue. I wanted to see how this particular speaker filled a room or didn't. And so placed the speaker on a reference speaker stand at normal stand mounted speaker distance in my relatively large listening area to see how it coped. I then pushed out Marvin Gaye's Mercy Mercy Me via Bluetooth via my phone. Given that when you stream anything at all, you're starting from a relatively low point in terms of sound quality because of the compressive technologies utilized. And also in this case, because the music file was a lossy file, the Cabas performed remarkably well. Firstly, the unit filled my room with music and did so to an admirable degree. Okay, it didn't shake the windows, but the volume was high enough for comfortable listening. In terms of bass, you're never going to hear deep and massy low frequencies with such small drive units. Yet the bass area was a real highlight of the cabass. That is, the upper bass and lower mids area were suitably punchy and jaunty. The bass transients were honed to a degree that bass guitar offered a real twangy effect, giving the music a lovely bounce and rhythmic swing 
that push the song forward at all times. Some Bluetooth units feel stodgy enough to feign unconsciousness. The cabass was always on the ball. For the mids and treble, there was enough detail here to give the overall delivery a sense of balance, with secondary percussion, harmony vocals and rhythm guitar nicely poised, providing sufficient detail to fatten out the mix and provide a busy soundstage effect. And speaking of the soundstage, it did extend past the boundaries of the cabass unit itself. It was stretched left and right, and that was a welcome, quite surprising effect. And what the extended soundstage meant in practical terms was for upper mids and for treble, it added uh, and space, especially for the sax solo and the ride cymbal. I then tried the cabass as a near field speaker and moved to my MacBook and used Audivana Plus playing a 24-bit 176 track called Looking for a Home from Keith Greeninger and Day Kai, offering two voices and two acoustic guitars. This high-res, lower noise track showed the cabass at its best. Yes, if you push the speaker hard, then the mid-range would strain a bit and the treble would pinch a bit, but that effect was heard only during extreme maximum volume. In normal play, the speaker produced a nice tonal balance without any sense of mid-range smearing or bass bloom. This gentle precision and agreeable focus produced no high-end frequency emphasis. The cabass was low-key and neutral, allowing the music to speak without any undue coloration. I then played some post-rock from the band 35007, a 24-bit 96 from a digital music player in a near field position. As you might expect, the sonic output within this wired configuration, and this was wired, was the best of all, providing a relatively mature and layered delivery, confident and rich in tone. Mid-range frequencies were nicely separated to enhance the available air around the soundstage, while bass was not too forward, but integrated well within the mix to give the music a rock solid bass to work from. Now I know the whole point of a Bluetooth speaker is Bluetooth, but if you want the best quality sound from this little Bluetooth speaker, if you do want the best possible sound, a wired connection is best. For example, if you're using a Bluetooth speaker really as something with a low footprint, then by all means, hook up a digital music player via a wire, play your music as is, and it will sound much better than a Bluetooth connection. So what's my conclusions about the Cabass Swell? Probably the biggest compliment I can give this speaker is that it doesn't panic. What do I mean by that? Well, for many Bluetooth speakers, especially when you go down into the cheaper end, they're desperate to sound good. They're desperate to perform well. And what they do with the cheaper components included within a, a low cost Bluetooth chassis, they'll emphasize frequencies. You'll get quite a harsh upper mid-range because they're desperate to give you detail. They'll give you a pinched treble, so you'll get the tss, tss, tss noise when treble, when cymbals are hit, for example. Bass will be boomy and bloomy, and it'll sound like a bit of a mess, basically because the Bluetooth speaker's trying too hard. Now, there's a bit of money being spent in this thing, and it means the components have a higher quality and the design is carefully thought out. And so when you play the Cabas Swell, what you get is mm, a sort of general ease, a maturity, a richness in sound. For the size of the speaker, of course, you know, it's not a miracle worker, but within its size, within its form factor and its small footprint, it does very well indeed. It sounds audiophile, it sounds quality. So you're asked to spend £229 for a Bluetooth speaker, and I think the Cabas Swell sounds £229 in terms of what it can do sound-wise. The Cabas Swell is not fully featured, it's not multi-function, because what it wants to do is give you music, and that's it. And it does it very well indeed. So if you're looking for a specialist Bluetooth speaker that plays music and does nothing else, so there's no radios or alarms or whatever, it just plays music. And if that's all you want, I highly recommend it. And that's the end of this video, folks. If you're looking to buy a Cabas Swell, I'll put a link 
at the end of the video. I'll also put some links down below for my site. There's a heap of content on there too. Also my Patreon page. If you can support me, I'd greatly appreciate that. There's a Facebook link for my Facebook group and other social media links as well. Until the next video, I hope I'll see you there. Bye bye for now.